Wow, I am so tired. We've been busy all weekend working on Lab 3, getting that built. And we're working with wet milled lumber that Thor makes here on site. And this wood is so heavy. And Thor, he has always been the brains of all the construction. And to be perfectly honest, I'm always just his, his bitch when it comes to construction. I'm always doing the hard lifting and making all the cuts for him so that he can plan everything together. And I worked really hard this weekend. I am completely burnt out. I am so tired. And King was here this weekend as well. And you know what? I'm really lucky. I got two, two people involved in this business that know a lot about construction. And this building is starting to come together so quick. I'm going to bring you guys in here and show you what Lab 3 is going to be all about. So this is the entrance to lab three. We've done a five foot door. We're gonna do some kind of fold up garage style door where the tractor can pick up our, our new sterilization bins with its forks, bring it to the step here. Door is gonna open wide open and we're gonna set these steam tanks probably on some pallets with wheels so that we can wheel the bins off to the side and we'll probably put about three in here at a time this is all going to be incubation space back here this enters into lab two right now and the really cool part is that simon and i did such a good job with the concrete concrete blocks that thor was able to frame the plywood right up to the step here and to be honest it looks like this building was purposely built this way but we actually have have since added to the existing structure here which was actually never intended and this building looks really slick so the flow hoods are going to go along the wall here the sterilization bins will just kind of line right up and we're going to be able to unload from our steam tanks right onto our laminar flow hood workbench and then everything is going to get shelved back here so we have about 28 feet of usable lab space and then this can continuously expand beyond here if if we want to we uh, were working so hard this weekend that we actually forgot to frame in a back door here and we noticed uh, 
we noticed that we missed that as the wall went up. We were just so tired and it was getting really late. So we're gonna be framing in a door here and knocking some of these studs out, but really easy fix. We got all the roof trusses on and for the last couple hours yesterday, King and Thor were trying to figure out this angle. If you guys can see that the angle to connect the two buildings and it's pretty tricky so we're going to be running some tin that kind of slopes down and they're actually going to be taking some of this off and redoing an angle so that water can just run right off the building but overall this has come up come together pretty quick it's about four days of work and two weekends and we're looking to get the roof on this building probably by next weekend and then we'll start working on getting this insulated and getting a coat of paint on the floor we're going to be getting a new ac hooked up to this building we redid the ac line here for the split heat pump so now that comes off to the side there and there's the exhaust and if we want, this possibly will be a container or some kind of some kind of barn structured shelter over top here where the bins can cool down and then we can forklift those into the lab as the temperature reaches. We're probably looking to do about 25 to 30 Celsius before we even consider doing inoculations. But this is pretty neat. So this is all rough cut timber. All our studs are two by six. Same with the roof joists up here. We have a really, really big uh, two by eight down the center where we've done some finished two by six for the uh, roof joists. And it's all gonna be uh, two feet centers for where we're putting the tin roofing in. And it just so happens that the repurposed tin that we got is exactly at two feet. So we're gonna be putting all this strapping on and then screwing the tin just into that. So this is the next step, is getting the strapping all on these roof joists right here. And then the tin goes up. The roof is gonna get insulated, the sides are gonna insul get insulated and this is going to come together pretty quick. 40 foot long building here, 12 feet wide. This is uh, pretty awesome. This was never intended in, in our original plan to have a building that goes all the way down the side here. But we have so much space that we can ex expand on. And this actually becomes really efficient for our farm. We're able to unload right through uh, the greenhouses here into the the front main area where we can unload for production so we'll probably end up having we're going to put a temporary door here and then we'll probably end up having a door right about here if we ever do decide to expand the building and then we'll have kind of multiple doors as as the greenhouses continue to expand if we get that big Right now we're working on efficiencies and we're working on increasing our yield. That's why we just bought the hammer mill for our farm. I haven't really got into that just yet. We're uh, looking at changing the, the filter right now. We have a, an old oil style filter that we're gonna be changing and getting modified to a proper filter, just like the filters on Thor's chippers. So I'll get into that once we get that all sorted out. But we just got some screens in, we're looking at looking we're looking at doing half inch or three quarter inch screens to make like a chunky sawdust. And then we got to compare that with our wood chips and we we'll playing around with bran and soy hulls and kind of coming up with the ult ultimate mix on our farm to produce high yielding mushroom blocks. And right now the research is just starting to come in with the master's mix. T.R. Davis is the one who, who kind of got us all interested in the master's mix which is 50 percent soy hulls 50 percent sawdust and i'm picking on five pound blocks i'm picking about a pound and a quarter mushrooms on the first flush so we're looking at getting probably between a pound and and three quarters to almost two pounds 
per block just using the master's mix. So that's kind of the baseline. The only problems that I would say that I'm having right now is because we use a super pasteurization method and we don't use an autoclave, some of our master's mix blocks, even this time of year, is still starting to, is still growing black mold in our lab. It's a very low percentage. So that's the thing that I need to figure out with my farm before we get into peak summer is does our pasteurization unit have some weak spots? Maybe we're not quite heating up all our blocks up to temperature or maybe I need to reduce supplementation or not fill our tanks as much as we are with the master's mix because you're not getting as much heat penetration and possibly we're not sterilizing our blocks as effectively as we'd like. With, with autoclaves you get higher temperatures by using pressure and I know TR uses his autoclave for this so he's definitely able to kill everything on his substrate and I need to figure out with our super pasteurization tanks that only get up to 212 Fahrenheit are we able to steam longer or do I need to reduce supplementation to kind of get that perfect sweet spot where we get no contamination so that's all the stuff we're working on right now guys first we're working on getting some sawdust increasing production in our greenhouses and we're increasing our lab space so that we can do more production on our farm and we'll be able to fill all of these greenhouses we have right now we have five greenhouses and start filling these faster within the month make these more productive and then we're looking to add a couple more pads, at least get up to seven greenhouses on our farm and then go from there. Right now, we're always sold out. We're looking to hit markets every weekend this year and pick up at least another 15 restaurants and just kind of see where the market's at before we get too big. We're not a wholesale mushroom farm. We sell direct to restaurant, direct to market, and that's what we'd like to do moving forward. So. For us, we're just trying to figure out how big the market is and then how big our farm needs to get. But we're, we're off to a great start. And this is uh, something that we've been talking about for a while, getting this new building constructed. So really stoked to see this starting to all come together. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. We'll see you guys in the next video. And just remember, uh, we have uh, a really awesome education program here called the mentorship i'll leave a link to my website below check that out i've also written a book i always leave a link to the show notes for that but i'll leave a link up there as well if you guys want to check that out ultimately this channel is all about getting you guys excited about growing mushrooms i always share about i always share all the experiences that i have done on my farm and where we're headed because that is always how i've learned is by sharing and i think it's so interesting kind of figuring out how to develop a business and we're very much right in the center of developing our business here in summerland so i hope you found this video helpful guys more stuff coming out we'll see you in the next video